Hi, hello, and welcome once again. Thanks again so much for joining me. My name is Megan Rosendahl. I am your crafting coach, and here we are back at it with another exciting new project. All over Pinterest, there are dozens of different types of wall art that a person can do, but one that I've personally seen a lot of are button trees. It's a simple painted canvas that utilizes different buttons for leaves. This week, I'm going to show you how to make your very own button trees. So here is what you're going to need for this week's project. A blank canvas, I'm using an 8x10 size for mine, two different paint colors, a lighter color for the background and a darker color for the silhouette of the tree, paint brushes, Mod Podge, and buttons, any size, any color. The first thing you'll want to do is paint your canvas with whatever background color you chose. Make sure to cover the entire canvas, including the sides. Now, I'm a stickler for everything being nice and even, so I highly recommend at least two coats to ensure that none of the white canvas shows through. When you're done, be sure to rinse your brush out and let it dry completely between coats. A wet brush equals streaks. Also, be sure to let the canvas dry completely before applying the next coat. Once you're satisfied with your background, we'll start painting a tree silhouette. Here are the best tips that I can give. I'll usually start at the base of the tree. This is typically the thickest part, so we can start here and gradually thin out as we go. Also, branches are typically thinner than the trunk, so try to thin them out the further you get from your base, like the natural movement and growth of a tree. Remember, trees are unique. No two trees are alike, so have fun with the branches when you start to make them. Don't be afraid to let your inner Bob Ross emerge. He wasn't afraid of adding to sections that he thought were missing something. So if you feel like an extra branch should go there, then paint it. Also, keep in mind that you'll be covering up the very ends of the branches with buttons, so they don't need to be perfect. If you have any oops that you want to get rid of along the way, just plan on putting a button there. Once you're done with your silhouette, let this also completely dry. Letting the paint dry between applications is muy importante. This would be a great time to dig through any buttons that you might have to figure out which ones you want to use for your leaves. Now, I have a ridiculous assortment of buttons that actually kind of borderlines on nuts. Most of them I've gotten at the Ron Carlin Nearly New. They sell a whole jar for like three bucks. If you're a rummage sale fanatic like me, then keep your eyes out there too because they usually go for pretty cheap. If you saw my River Rocks project from last week, then be prepared to watch a very similar process. You'll want to do a dry run on the buttons before you start gluing. Just start placing the buttons on the ends of the branches just like leaves. I like to group two or three in a bunch with others around them. If I'm using multiple colors, I'll put several of one color together then surrounded by the other color. This is where your imagination completely takes control. When you're happy with how it looks, just start gluing each button on separately. I usually apply the glue to the button first rather than to the canvas first. And that's all folks. This is another fun project that's so great to do because it's so original and it ends up looking kind of classy. It's a very inexpensive project that really just takes a bit of time for everything to dry. With the buttons, canvas, and paint, this project comes in at just under 10 bucks with supplies left over to do another one. They make great wall decor, and I've even done some as gifts. Thanks again so much for taking the time to watch this video. As always, I'll be back next week with a brand new project just for you. We'll tear it apart, we'll break it down, we'll tell you what to do, we'll tell you what not to do, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun along the way. Be sure to follow me on Pinterest. You can find me under Megan Rosendahl. Also, be sure to follow the Aberdeen American News online and on Facebook, where all of the Crafting Coach videos will be made available for you. If you have any tips, ideas, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to email me. I'd love to hear from you at mrosendahl at aberdeennews.com. I'll see you next week. Bye!